So, Christy, if we're just bringing this into land, we, let's just think about just the lives of local churches. We're, we're all members of local churches. Um, I think this is an issue for every Christian, pastors as well, but certainly for every Christian. I was really intrigued by that switch you were talking about, you know, in general terms, as you mm. were saying. If maybe in the past a lot of people were coming with, they wanted to know about evidence. Show me the evidence for the resurrection. I'm a scientific kind of person. Opening question. Now, fewer people, that's their approach. More often their approach is almost, there is no approach other than, hey, I'm cool if you're cool and it's all fine. <laughs> now you're saying, well, stick with people. And if they see something of the quality of the lives of Christians, um, the life in Christ uh, that he's brought in the spirit, that we, that we live in our local churches, if they can see some of that over a period of time, they will begin to ask, now tell me the reason for the hope that's in you. Mm -hmm. But I, I think I wrestled with this a bit as a pastor, uh, and I still wrestle it now. Now I'm no longer a pastor, but a member of a church. So so how do you stay in relationship with people? Mm -hmm. How can what, what can churches do? What can members of churches do? What do we need maybe to tweak in the way we just do our life as Christians mm. to allow people in while they're not asking any questions at all, apparently, at least on the surface? Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been thinking about this recently. And as I look at my own life and I look at the, the friendships that I have, this might not be you know, true for everyone. And it's much harder now, actually, um, living here than it has been before. But um, it's, it's cultivating and maintaining genuine friendships with people, not because you want to at some point preach the gospel to them, though that would be wonderful to be able to share such goodness with them, but because you want to honour and love and care for them as a, as a fellow human being made in the image of God. People very quickly can see through um, any kind of mm. tactics, insincerity, um, and rightly so, we can all do that. Um, and so thinking then, well, what does it look like for me to, to cultivate and to maintain those kind of relationships? It can be very difficult and it very much depends, doesn't it, on um, our age and stage in life, um, our particular commitments, family commitments, all sorts of things. But one thing that most of us will have after university uh, at some point is either um, a work, a workplace or a, a hobby um, or a favourite book or a favourite meal, <laughs> or a restaurant that we like going to, um, or music that we like listening to, or a play that we want to um, go and see. Really, it's just thinking, do what you... I remember somebody, um, Jason Clark, um, he's, he's, um, he's in Sheffield. I remember there was one talk that he gave when I, when I worked for UCCF, and he just said, just do what you love and take Jesus with you. <laughs> and, and that's just really stuck with me, actually. And so I think one of the one of the things I'd in, I'd encourage you know just just Christians church leaders whomever they may be is how to encourage one another as brothers and sisters in Christ to do what we do what we love and to take Jesus with us. So if that's if that's sports, join a local sports team and get to know get to know the other people on that on that team. You know, invest in them, care for them, and cultivate those genuine relationships there, so that when they see you. Um, uh, and they're they're prompted and provoked to ask questions. They will. You've you've got that. It's trust, and it's trust that is just so lacking at the at the moment. Particularly thinking about, you know, post truth in, um, issues and, and all sorts of other things which you haven't had time to talk about. Um, but most of the time, most people are thinking, "Who can I trust?" And they're watching mm. you if they know that you're a Christian. And they're looking for reasons to either distrust you or reasons to think, "How can I share my deepest pain with you?" Um, and so what does it look like for, for us to kind of cultivate those kinds of, of relationships that are genuine? It's not, you know, project kind of centred, but yeah, person centred. Yeah, yeah. And as you say, keep at it. And then presumably when a moment arises, when maybe one of those uh, questions that's suppressed starts to bubble up, you will then at that point have the credibility, the relational credibility to, to, to speak and to be heard and to uh, potentially communicate something that, that would have been very difficult, if not impossible, to communicate to that person had you sort of uh, gone in cold, as it were. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you've got those questions. Have you ever wondered, you know, why, why I'm a Christian or, or whatever it is you're talking about? Oh, why do you say that in response to something that you might be reading or something that's happened? Um, and oh, what do you mean by that? 
You know, they're, they're just they're very easy questions to ask, but they keep the conversation going because often we ask the first question of, oh, what do you think? But we, we struggle to ask the second follow up question, which is when how a conversation develops. And th- I tell you where this where I, where, where I know this bites for me personally, and I doubt I'm very unusual in this. This takes time and this requires patience. And there will often be little discernible fruit. Mm -hmm. And if you're the kind of person who's wired that you want, you want your life to be a series of projects and you want your life in your ministry to be, well, I achieved this and I tick this box and I achieved that and tick that box. This just doesn't fit with that at all, does it? Mm, no. Um, I mean, I don't think anybody. I don't think I know anybody who sets out into ministry thinking, "Let's let's make people into projects." But it's incredibly easy to fall into mm. when you want a sense of my church is, church is a success, my ministry is a success, mm. I'm a success. Because the kind of thing you're talking about is just going to be days, months, years mm. relating to people. Yeah, and who knows? Who knows what the Lord will produce out of that? Yeah. And much of that comes by way of um, Dallas Willard, the philosopher um, and theologian, talked about the ruthless elimination of hurry. Because a lot of the, um, some of the reason why we why we are so project centered is we're so busy. So we think, oh, you know, there are ten minutes to be able to talk to this person, half an hour to talk to this person. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it doesn't mean that we're not busy. But eliminating that hurry. Um, because again, people know when you, when you're fidgeting, you need, you need to go and you're not, you're not going to, um, cultivate a genuine relationship, you know, in that time. But also it just does take time. My, the friend that I mentioned earlier on, we've been friends now for 22, 23 years. And in some ways it's familiarity at the moment, which is, which is making it even more difficult to speak because mm-hmm. either I'm the exception to the rule, which is like, Christy, I know that you're not homophobic. I know that you're not this, but all these other people are. And so that's why for me, encouraging her into community, it would be such a great thing for her to see that this isn't just me. This is, this is a whole, (laughs) these are, these are redeemed people who are thinking this in, in very similar, but very different ways. And there's diversity, there's unity and diversity. And, um, so yeah. And, and, and none of this is to say that we shouldn't, that we shouldn't speak, you know, um, I think the more, most of us, you know, if there were a spectrum between talking and not talking, most of us would probably be on the talking end of it. So I'm just wanting to kind of, for those of us who might be there, to encourage us to be more down here. Mm-hmm. But for those of us who might be more down here and, and a bit timid and will never speak, even if there were, was the opportunity, just to encourage them with those questions to to start the conversation. You don't need to have all the answers. You don't, you know, need to know, you know, X, Y, and Z about Dawkins or, you know, about the resurrection. In fact, the most... Um, significant, um, the most significant thing that was ever said to me when I was looking into the claims of Jesus for myself was my mum in response to a question that I asked her when she said, I don't know. And that just spoke volumes to me because I'd been speaking to Christians up to that point who were giving me all these nice ideas and I could tell that they didn't know what they're talking about. <laughs> they just very want, you know, very much wanted to proffer something. And um, so you don't actually know what you're talking about. I can't, I don't trust you because you actually know what you believe for a start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but when my mum said, I don't know, I just pierced right through it. And I thought, ah, mm. there's something here because you're willing to tell me you don't know. And then she said she wanted to find out and we could talk about it together later. And again, that <laughs> that just helped me so much in my own, um, yeah, in my own conversations when it, when it came to, I guess, receiving Jesus for myself. So sorry, there's a lot there, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, Great. 